Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. If you have been watching, you know that I'm doing a series on things that I wish somebody would have told me when I was starting my business, all right? Um, before we get started, oh, first of all, my name is Takara with Hot Sauce Shiro. I'm acting like y'all already know me. Some of y'all don't even know me yet. My name is Takara with Hot Sauce Shiro. Um, I am Hot Sauce Shiro everywhere. www.hotsauceshiro.com so you can see all the flavors that I got over Alpha. Okay, and before we get started, y'all go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell or whatever, you know, so you can be notified every time that I drop one of these videos right here. I don't even know how long this series is going to go. I'm just doing um, things that I feel like y'all need to know. And then I'm answering questions that, you know, people asking me as well. All right. Subscribe. You won't be mad that you did. All right, y'all. So today's video is going to be about going legal. Last video, if you saw that, that was how you shake and bake Ricky Bobby. You know what I'm saying? Work up under the table. But this time, we are going completely legal. All right? Boom. All right, so let's start off with pH testing. Being that hot sauces are an acidic product, you will need to get your product tested in a lab. Um, it, it needs to be a state appointed lab. It, you should be able to find this on your state's food and agriculture website um, or whoever governs the food quality of your state. So that you might have to do a little research, but for the state of Florida that I'm in, it's governed by the food and agriculture people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, all hot sauces need to have a pH of 4.6 or, or lower. And um, it costs about $100 per sauce in order to get them tested. You send the sauces off. Um, prior to you sending them, the lab should send you a form that you have to fill out. Most likely you have to type it. They don't want you to handwrite it. Um, you type out the process from you know, like how you make your sauce from start to finish, from the start of you making your sauce to you bottling it. They want to know every single thing. Um, if they have some tips along the way, they will give you those tips on how to better, you know, produce and bottle your sauces and stuff like that. So that is very important. And then once your sauce is certified by that lab to be 4.6 or lower on the ph scale then they will give you a um i think it's called an authority letter i can't really remember but whatever they'll give you that letter and it's a, that's what's about a hundred dollars per flavor i feel like it's best to just do them all at the same time like for me i have a um i have a summer flavor so what i did was i made a small batch of that summer flavor and i just submitted all six of my flavors at the same time opposed to you know me doing the five that were year round and then jumping around and then doing the the summer one later on i just did them all at the same time so that's very important um another thing that you will need for your labels is that you will need to have a nutrition label all right you need to have the nutrition facts on your label is what i'm trying to say so you know, I'll be having the tips for y'all, right? So there's a free way to get your nutrition labels and it's FDA approved. Um, if you go to, and I am not endorsed by this site, but I'm so happy that I found them. It's recipal.com, R-E-C-I-P-A-L.com. You can literally generate a nutrition label for your labels for free. You enter your recipe like exactly the way you make your sauce the exact um, measurements and everything and you put in let's say if you have a recipe and it makes 30 bottles you'll put that recipe you'll put that it makes 30 bottles they'll convert it down to one bottle and how much of everything that's inside that bottle completely free all right check them out um it's a safe site i mean as safe as the internet is but i mean if you're worried about somebody getting your um your recipe don't be okay like free is free okay 
And at the end of the day, we got to cut some corners here, all right? So don't worry about nobody getting your recipe, but they promise you that this site is is um is safe as possible and i trust it you know and i'm very particular about my sauces so i wouldn't tell y'all nothing that i don't trust for myself okay um another thing is that you have to do a better practice course or at least for my state if you don't need it for your state you will know you know look for all the requirements that you need for your state but like i said these are things that no one told me so i'm telling you it's better to for me to tell you something more than what you need than for you to think that you need less because I didn't know I needed all this stuff at first. Um, and so there's an online course and it's with um, a university. I don't even remember which university it was, but um, all of this came from my, my uh, state's website. And um, it's called a better practice course. And what it does is it's an um, online course about you know bottling and dealing with acidic products and the best way to deal with them you know because it that could get a little funky you know you got mold and all kind of stuff that you know a product that's going to be sitting on the shelf for a year's time you know you have to be pretty particular about so that's this course is teaching you how to deal with your particular type of product. Okay, so that's something else that's required. That's a $400 course. Um, you have up into a year to complete the course. They send you, um, they send you a, a book for you to study with and um, you have different, what is it called? You have like different tests and things that you have to pass and um, yeah, that's that. Also, you will need insurance. So insurance, you can get, um, it's about $3.99 a year. So that covers your business as well as the commercial kitchen that you operate out of. So you would need to list them on your insurance. And um, yeah, you have to have insurance, okay. It's better to have it than to not have it. Then another thing that you will need is you will need to become a certified food manager or there needs to be someone in your company who is a certified food manager who is going to be on site every single time that your sauces are being produced. Okay, that's mandatory. Um, the course, uh, they so they it's a test and they have um, state designated testing areas where you have to go and you take this test like they they are so serious about it it's not something that you take at home mm -mm. no 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 you have to go there and test and be tested for it they take your cell phone they take everything it's for real um this course is i mean this test is like 125 you can find free um you can find free prep material or you can purchase it, but you know, I'm all about the free and the cheap child. So yeah, that's something that you have to do. And that test, it tells you, you know, it's about like food handling and you know, um, cleanliness and you know, food shouldn't be on the floor and all these different things, you know, you don't put, you know, raw meat over this and that all that good stuff, you know what I'm saying? So you gotta take that course too, okay? Um, as far as permitting with the state, there is a wholesale permit and there's a retail permit. In my opinion, I like to think futuristic. So when I got my permit, I went the wholesale route, which led me to all of these requirements that I'm telling you about. Now. On the retail aspect, it may not, you know, your state may not require you to do all of these things. However, most people who are starting making a hot sauce or making any particular product, your end game is to have someone else sell your product for you. So that's why I wanted to go the wholesale route. Um, but retail is more so like if you think you're only going to be selling in farmers markets and you're only going to be, you know, I don't know. I don't know what else you will be doing other than farmers markets, but whatever. If you're going to be the or 
on your online store if you're going to be the only person selling your product but like i said i think it's best to think futuristic so i went the wholesale route and if you watch my last video you see that i told you you can still sell at farmers markets and not have a permit so if i could sell at farmers markets and not have a permit i know damn well i could sell at a farmers market and have a wholesale permit okay so i wasn't about to pay twice to get a retail and get a wholesale permit i just i wasn't about that life so i suggest doing a wholesale route but that's just my opinion you do what's best for you okay and then the other thing that you have to do is you have to find a commercial kitchen to operate out of you need a commercial kitchen where the the people or the person who owns it or who's operating that kitchen they're helpful they're giving you information. They are knowledgeable. Um, they should be helping you submit your forms to the state. You know, they probably ain't gonna fill it out for you now. Don't be going too far, but they should be helping you. You know what I mean? They should be informing you on everything that you need to be completely legal. Um, they should also be affordable. If you're in an area, like I'm in Miami, so I have options. But if you're in an area where you don't have many options and there's only like maybe two or three commercial kitchens in your in your town or close by or whatever, then you kind of got to take what you got to take. But... You know, what I was finding when I was looking for a commercial kitchen is that people were charging, um, they might charge like an hourly rate, which would be like $25 per hour. And then on top of that, then I have to pay like $700 a month and this, this and that. And I'm like, like, it just really wasn't sitting right with me until I found the place that I signed up for and they only charged me an hourly rate. So they charged me an amount to sign up, which is, completely fair and then they charge me um an hourly rate for every for the hours that I use and typically there is a minimum of hours that you need to use per month in order like because that commercial kitchen needs to they need to report the hours that you're using their facility so that's how the state knows that you're actually working in the commercial kitchen and you're not doing you know you're not just signed up with this commission this kitchen and working at home that's not okay so you need to be there for a minimum and typically that minimum is like ten dollars i'm saying ten dollars typically that minimum is 10 hours a month so um yeah you find somewhere that works for you and someone in a commercial that gels with you it works with your schedule you know um if it's 24 hours that's even better i mean sometimes they want you to have a set schedule which kind of sucks but what i like about the place that i found is that they have an online scheduling system so i can go online um maybe like a week or so in advance and say hey i'm gonna need the kitchen on thursday you know next week or you know i might need the kitchen next tuesday but it doesn't have to every time be a tuesday or be a thursday or be a saturday i don't have to use that same day but sometimes that's how people operate so you know that's that's how things go all right um oh also make sure the commercial kitchen is clean because the state is going to come and check okay and you don't want to spend all your money um submitting your paperwork for you to get permitted for the state to come to that commercial kitchen and then your money go to waste and now you got to do all this whole process all over again permitting and stuff okay because the kitchen was, was tripping so those are my tips and steps towards going legal i hope that was completely clear i try to make it as quick and simple and easy as possible um those are all the things that i could think of right now but if anything was unclear if you have any questions always feel free to email me to dm me comment below if you have any questions um reach out like i said i'm open book i am here okay these are literally things that i wish someone would have told me i went years without knowing this stuff okay so again my name is takara 
Hot Sauce Shiro, www.hotsaucechiro.com. Okay, y'all know where to find you, girl. All right, make sure y'all subscribe to my channel. I love you guys, and I want to see all of us win. All right, until we meet again, bye.